Hello, everybody. My name is Molly Hollabaugh, and I'd like to welcome you to the Zentangle Project Pack series. This lesson um, is part of our Project Pack number four. And Project Pack four, four is pretty cool, and it's designed around a specific project we're calling the Zentangle Spinner. We're going to use um, our 12 days series, um, in case you're just starting today. Most of you are probably well into this. Um, and we're going to be sharing um, lessons every day of the 12 days series to cover your Zentangle Spinner. Um, today, I'm sharing with you the 10th day in the series. Um, but if you're watching these out of order, you're welcome to join along with us today. Um, and that's fine too. So today I'm going to um, guide you through filling one wedge of the spinner. I have this um, lovely spinner that's with some blue and then some um, spaces that are left plain too, which is pretty cool. I think I'll work on one of the colored spaces right now. And I'm going to um, show you a series of tangles and I'm going to start with one of my favorites. Um, it's a tangle called Jonkle. Um, you probably, um, if you see any of my work, you might see Jonkle show up a lot because to me it, it sort of adds this little whimsical um, drama to your tangles. So I tend to use it a lot. It's really just a variation of a checkerboard, um, but it has a little bit more interest, I think. So I'm going to create a series of vertical lines here in this space right here. And I'm going to begin um, by just drawing a line right down the center. And then I think I'm going to redefine the outside lines. And then I'm going to divide um, the two remaining spaces in half. So I have a couple of columns here. Okay. So my next step is I'm going to create a series of sort of zigzag lines. Um, and I'm going to begin at the top here. And I'm going to begin by doing sort of a V shape that um, the bottom of the V hits that column. And I do the same right here. So again, diagonal line going this way and that way. Um, so that point hits those middle columns. Okay, so I have a little bit of a V shape here. So really what I want to do at this point is I want to duplicate that zigzag shape all the way down um, so that each zigzag is parallel to one another. So I want to focus on one column at a time. So as I do this column, I want to draw another line going same exact direction. So parallel to that one. And then this one will go up just like that one did. I encourage you to take your time doing this because sometimes like your tendency is to make it want to go kind of wonky. So if you just take your time and make sure it's parallel to the one above it, you can stay in the right um, direction. So again, make sure you're parallel to the one above it. And I have this sort of spacing I'm working with here. Up. Down. And then up again. And I don't know if maybe you could fit a little one here, but maybe the hint of the next one happening. So this is basically a variation of a grid. Um, and when you ink in Jonkle, you're just going to ink it in as if it were a checkerboard, um, which seems fairly simple, but <laughs> you can kind of get going in the wrong direction if you don't take your time. So I'm going to start by inking in every other space here. I like to use my O1, um, but you're welcome to use any pen. Some people like to switch pens when it's time to ink in. I'm going to skip a space and then ink in this one right here. And then I'm going to go down the next column, filling in the opposite. Again, just taking your time to make sure you're filling in the right space. Take a breath. Take a minute to make sure you're going in the right space. <laughs> if your pen starts to skip a little on top of the uh, watercolor, then um, I like to just kind of have another piece of paper to sort of get the pen running again. It just needs a little... just. Do a couple squiggles on another piece of paper. So just take your time filling in each space. So 
I don't like to rush through the coloring in phase because it adds so much to your artwork. And to me, it's this like other opportunity to kind of just zone out and take your time. And again, it's when you're switching columns, you want to just take a breath and make sure you're moving into the right space where you're inking in. So really the result is sort of this kind of fun house checkerboard kind of thing. One of my favorites by far. So that's Jonkle. All right, so I'm gonna move on to this next section in the middle here. I'm gonna add another one of um, my favorite tangles. I think I say that a lot, I know. I got a lot of favorites, but um, Munchen's a, a special tangle for me. And if they ever have never heard me tell the story before, Munchen was a tangle that was um, discovered because I had so much trouble with the tangle paradox that I just decided I would just let it go for a while and I would do a simplified version. So <laughs> that's where Munchen came from. Um, it starts out a bit different than Paradox though. So here's how I start Munchen. Um, I like to cover the space I'm working in with some random dots that are sort of spaced out like a constellation of stars might be um, some closer together, some further apart. Maybe, I don't know, a dozen or so. And um, I'm just going to start off like that. I can add some more later if I need to. And then once I have my dots down, I want to take um, just two of those dots and allow those to be the only dots in my focus that are next to each other. And I'm just going to simply connect them with a line. Then I'm going to find a dot that's sort of near that line. And then start on the dot. I'm going to travel down to that line, always starting on the dot, and I'm going to ever so slowly work my way down that line. Just taking my time. So that's your basic munchin. So now the trick is to sort of continue doing that, but allowing each new one to sort of build off the last. So I'm going to use this line now as my landing strip. And I'm going to start on the dot, I'm going to travel down the line, slowly working my way from the dot to the line until I get to the bottom. So I just have a couple more here to do, and I'm sort of imagining that they go a little bit off the space. Kind of like how that looks. So sort of pretending that I have a dot up there. More like this. Let's see, and then this one, I think I'll just play with that. Going a little bit up here. Love munching, it has such a cool, almost looks like origami or something to me. Very fun. All right, cool. So the next one I'm going to show you in this border area is a tangle called Centipede. Um, Centipede's a, one of the original tangles that they um, came up with when Centangle first came about. And um, it's really sort of a variation on um, tipple, but it's a great border tangle and it has a little bit of fun to it. So here we go. So I'm going to draw, um, I'm going to start with a an orb here. And you may want to just want to watch me for a minute. And then... I'm going to continue a series of orbs with a, a little bit of a variation, and I'm also not going to quite touch it to the border just because I want to do something at the end. So I'm going to start with an orb here, and that would be perfect. That has a little bit of space left because I want to do something at the end there. My next um, orb is going to sort of have a little bit of um, character. So they're going to be like each orb is going to kind of have a little character to the next one, meaning just kind of reacts to the one before it. So you see how I'm doing that? I sort of drew one orb and then each one after that sort of 
you're ordering the shape, and then I think I'm going to stop right there. So it's sort of a series of um, orbs that sort of have these spaces in between them. Next thing I'm going to do is going to actually just go around and aura the whole thing, paying attention to the little divots in between each one. And these little borders are just simple combinations, orbs, auras. They're fun. All right. And just because I like to, I'm going to ink in the, the spaces that behind there just to make it jump off the page a little bit. But that's up to you if you want to do that too. I think that adding ink here and there really makes your composition more interesting and sort of makes each tangle jump off the page a little bit instead of um, blending together. So a lot of times I'll squint my eyes and see where I might need to add a little bit more ink so that it accentuates all the different parts of the composition. There we go. And then centipede usually has a variation of these little um, just lines that go through. And I'm not sure if it's because my kids are really into reading the Peanuts comic strips right now, but these little lines just remind me of something I would see in a Pe Peanuts comic strip, but Makes it kind of fun. All right, well that ended. That's kind of a cool border, right? Just simple, but I like that. So that's centipede. All right, so I have two more spaces here. And um, I'm gonna start on this side with a tangle called Inzeppel, another one of my faves. And I think I'm gonna show you a version called Crazy Inzeppel because I just enjoy that one a little bit more. It's a little less structured. So I'm gonna begin by breaking up my section into sort of what we would call as a very random grid, almost like as if you were drawing holobah without double lines. So I'm, I'm basically drawing a series of straight lines going at different angles, really random. And uh, the goal is to sort of break your section up into a series of um, triangles and squares and rectangles. And that's pretty good. Let me do one more over here. So I have something like that. You don't want to make the spaces too tiny because then you're going to kind of lose control. So here's the goal within Zeppel. Um, when I teach in Zeppel, I really want to um, encourage folks to sort of imagine the shapes going in. And here, let's focus in, let's start by focusing in on one space here. So we have this sort of triangular space. And I want you to imagine if you had a ball or a balloon that was just a tiny bit bigger than this space, and you were to try to stuff it in there, the ball or balloon would sort of um, fit sort of, but it might not fit into the corners. So here is my drawing version of that, where I sort of trace the flat areas, but cut the corners, trace the flat areas and cut the corners. So I'm going to continue to sort of play that game where I am stuffing these sort of rounded shapes into these angular spaces. Again, you sort of trace the flat areas and then cut the corners. And you get this really interesting result. So let's go ahead and fill the rest of those spaces. All right, just finishing up here. Really taking your time. It's so important when you're doing in Zeppel to make sure you really draw the complete shape of each one because then you really get that full effect of, of what we're going for with in Zeppel. So pretty. I love that. And then over here, I'm going to do one last tangle. And this last tangle is called Samson. 
Um, Samson um, was named after a dear friend of ours, and um, I love this tangle. Um, she came up with it. I think it's kind of fun and unexpected. So I'm going to do a variation of Samson where I'm going to draw um, four sprigs. Samson's a little bit of a, a sort of a, um, I guess, an organic tangle. So I'm going to draw sort of an X that's floating in this space. I don't want to touch it quite to the ends. I want to leave it something like that. And then on each one of these, um, I guess we're going to call it a branch, I'm going to draw a series of these that work my way up, something like that. Space in between, maybe three or four on each one. And you notice I get a little bit smaller as I get towards the top. Do that on each one of my... Um, my sort of twigs here. Okay, so once you have all your sort of um, V shapes on there, we're gonna have a little fun with um, what I like to call my um, I had too much coffee stroke. <laughs> because the goal here is actually you want a really shaky line. So it's that's kind of funny. When I teach my kids, we call it a spooky line, but um, either way, it's a line that kind of looks like this. And I'm going to just gently aura each one of these vines, just not touching it, just going all the way around, sort of mimicking that shape with this sort of shaky line. The more shaky, the better. And it adds this kind of cool, sort of almost looks like a renaissance -y sort of look to it to me. And you're going to go all the way around all of your V shapes that you created. So there we go. I got all my, my shaky lines in. And you can leave it just like that, but if you want to sort of... Um, maybe add a little border to it. Sometimes we do that with Samson. We'll sort of maybe just add some sort of a, a shape that defines it. And you don't have to do this, but I kind of like to. And this kind of just gives it a little bit of... Um, and I'm just going to ink in these uh, areas over here. And it just sort of gives the tangle a little more presence next to the other ones. Again, that's me adding drama, but I like to do that with, with uh, Samson. Yeah, that actually, that little bit does add to it. But it's up to you if you want to do that or not, so... All right, so those are my tangles for my wedge here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start to add a little bit of shading. I'm gonna grab my graphite pencil and my tortillon, and then I know you guys don't have a, um, a white charcoal pencil, but I might add a little bit at the end if you do have one hanging around. So Jonkel's pretty fun to shade, and there's, there's different ways you can shade it, and I actually do do it a little different every time. Today I'm going to play with um, adding a little shadow at the top of, you see how these ones are going down to the, like, I guess it's my right here. I'm going to add a little darkness at the top here, just at the top. And then I'm going to skip one over and do the same thing over here where I have those same um, lines going down to the right. And then I'll just blend that a little bit with my tortillon. That looks pretty cool. And then I'm going to take my charcoal and uh, add a little bit on this side because that looks kind of fun, right? What I'm doing is I'm putting it pretty light at the top here, and then I'm just sort of, it's kind of fun. 
but that's up to you. Looks good without it, too. I love Jonkle. Go back in with my graphite and make it a little darker. Okay. Then with my munchin, I like to just put a little bit of a shadow at the bottom of um, each one of these triangular shapes and then just blend that with your tortillon and then you get this little sort of shadow which is neat. You can go ahead and do that on all of your triangular shapes. Once you get all your graphite on there again just sort of blend it with your tortillon. Love the way the uh, just a little bit of shading makes it kind of jump off the page. And my, my centipede looks cool right now because it's like it doesn't have the blue on there. So I'm just going to add a little bit maybe in the center here for little shadows here. I don't know why, I just thought that might be cool. So you may explore something different, but. And with my and Zeppel, I actually, I love to add a dark shadow around the edges and then just go back with your tortillon and just sort of blend that. So what's important with this one is make sure you leave that center un touched so you get that really cool effect. So I'm going to go around and do that with all of my Inzeppel. I'm going to finish up with my graphite. Again, remember to leave that center part because that's what makes it look like it's kind of sparkling. It's so cool like that. And it looks pretty awesome as is, but if you do have a, a white charcoal, you might come back and just sort of, you don't have to do it on all of them, but maybe just a couple Add a little bit, just kind of makes it pop a little bit. Kind of fun. Awesome. And then last but not least, so add a little bit to the Samson. I think I'm just gonna go back and sort of put a little graphite on top of that original X. It's pretty simple, but I think that's all it needs. And then just simply go over it with my tortillon. Every tangle can kind of have, you know, you go into so much detail on one with the shading and then the, the next can have something so simple in it. They both have something to offer. Well, that's pretty cool. I'm excited about that. Oh, at least looks great. I can't wait to finish the whole thing. I hope you guys are enjoying your spinners. Um, I can't wait to see them all done. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow with day 11. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon.